Go She-Hulk. So right out the gate, we pretty much pick up with the unfortunate news that the warrior from the comics Titania is an influencer in the MCU. Because of course she is. Fraggin' kill me. So we pretty much pick up exactly where the last episode dropped off with Jennifer Walters dealing with the aftermath of what she had to go through in the courtroom. So basically she goes to a bar to whine about her problems and to complain. By the way, that's a lot of this episode. Perpetual complaining. So then she makes a quote unquote witty one liner about how she can't exist by just being a derivative of a character. Like Jennifer, you do understand that you are a derivative of someone else. You see it's funny, right? Because it's true. Because she wouldn't exist without Hulk existing. But you know, whatever. And of course the male from her firm is also here to make a special misogynistic appearance apparently. Because every white male in this show is either incompetent, an idiot, or just terrible. Scratch that, it's anything with a penis in general that is terrible. So he makes a quick little line about nepotism and then he makes a crack at saying that there is an attractive woman right there. I'm going to go holler at it. He called a woman an it. Seriously, Jessica, stop writing this show. If I didn't make it painfully obvious in my last review of this show, females are writing this entire show. I don't know if you could, couldn't tell, you know, I don't, I don't know if it was, wasn't painfully obvious based on how they write these male characters. And it really shows in the decisions that they make in this episode. Also, I just find it funny. This is the only bit of realistic that is in this episode. Jennifer Walters gets free drinks. What is shocker? A woman gets free drinks just for being a woman. I'm not mad at it. It's fine. It happens. I just love that this show is trying to break down gender norms and the patriarchy, yet adhering to it and everything it entails to. Benefits and all, and apparently some form of perceived problems. Then of course we get our world famous clip that was also in a lot of the trailers saying that being a vigilante is nothing but for billionaires, narcissists, and adult orphans. Again, freaking kill me. I guess everyone who works their shield is a narcissist. I guess every single superhero who sacrificed themselves and their lives for, you know, the entire half of the universe, they're nothing but narcissists. Spider-Man was a kid throughout the entirety of the MCU and lost everything in his recent outing, so way to kick a man when he's already down. I swear this is the most selfish woman I have ever seen in this entire show. And let me make this clear, this is no hate towards the actress, honestly it's not, it's towards the directors and writers who make her say these things and do these things. Okay, maybe it's a little bit of her too. Then her token peanut gallery brings up the fact that she could be an Avenger, and then Jennifer starts complaining about the Avengers, because of course, most of the Avengers are men, therefore, you know, it's a terrible organization to be a part of, you know. She didn't ask a lot of stupid questions about the Avengers, and again, selfish questions nonetheless. In episode one and two, all she couldn't stop talking about is how all she wants to do is help people in her own way, and how being a superhero isn't basically, is basically worthless to her. It's not like people who literally sacrifice their very existence on a daily basis goes through any problems or issues or anything of that nature. She literally only looks at the Avengers as what can she get out of being one? That's crazy. Let's move on with the episode. So she loses her job, but don't worry. She gets another position because as we already know, this show is called She-Hulk Attorney at Law. There's no way she's not going to be an attorney. Just in case the audience is just as smooth brained as the writers of this show. Just so fast forward to Jennifer having a family dinner and there's something about this scene that really kind of irritates me, really. So as her father is trying to make her feel better about the entire situation, she brings up the fact that Hulk and I quote, destroyed a city and she didn't. For those who don't know, Abomination was destroying Harlem, not quite an entire city. And Hulk actually was putting his life on the line to protect the people of Harlem, not destroy the city. Oh, my mistake. I'm assuming that the writers actually watch the MCU. I apologize. You know, you would think that since the public knows such intricate details about Captain America's life and love life, you'd think they would know such important details as, you know, the Hulk trying to save people instead of, you know, destroying the city mindlessly. But, you know, there were just two men fighting. Therefore, they were just trying to destroy the place. A man trying to protect people is unfounded. Honestly, I don't know what I'm thinking of. But of course, it is 2022 and we have to emasculate, embarrass, and degrade male characters to prop up our female characters and to make them feel better. Kevin Feige, please stop hiring feminists to write these shows in modern day movies in the MCU. Please stop. 
Now, fast forward to when she gets into her new job in law firm. And she, I kid you not, the entire time she is getting introduced and getting the place ran to her, she's not even paying attention to this man. And on top of that, she's literally complaining to the audience how much the men didn't have to go through this and how she's so annoyed with the fact that she got hired based off of being a superhuman. What did you expect? It's a superhuman law firm that you're in charge of. How about you show some gratitude for the person you're literally going to be working for? Not only does this woman act like she couldn't care less about this job, but on top of that, all she does is complain about it. Even in the most corniest CW shows written by dudes, I never see the dudes complain this much in their second episode, nonetheless. Again, this woman is going to be a face of an entire firm, and this is how she acts about it. If no other job is hiring you, clearly this man has taken a chance on you. Everyone else literally said and i quote they don't want the freak show they don't want the attention they don't want to draw the attention this man literally saw something in you he took a chance on you but you know he's just an old white man so of course he could care less about her even though he gave her the dang job anyway finally we fast forward to the end of this episode and of course jen has a conversation about hulk how he's going to take the case blah 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 and finally they finally talk about the events of shang chi and the other phase four movies and yeah it only took long enough this had to be the most boring episode of this entire show. And honestly, it was just so happened to be the shortest, which is 100% hilarious because, bro, it had the least to say in this entire episode. Of course, when they weren't squeezing in their little idea of what toxic masculinity and male insecurities were. Again, the funny thing about this episode was how short it was. It's literally getting shorter. That's hilarious. People cannot deny the existence of the MCU. This show, <laughs> when it ends, will probably be the pinnacle of everything everyone's been complaining about on the internet when it comes to woke media for years now. From now on, people have to accept the fact that the MCU is dead. It's dead. It literally has been destroyed. They sacrifice good storytelling and honestly decent characters for what? Representation, progressive activism, and intersectional feminism galore. Captain Marvel with a storm of things to come, no matter how you look at it. And yes, I made an early prediction about this show. I am that confident that they're going to screw this entire show all the way to hell. And honestly, I don't see how people have faith in this brand anymore. Seriously, did we not see Ms. Marvel? Did we not see Multiverse of Mid? And many other examples in Phase 4. I don't understand why people still deny it at this point. Like, why? The copium in this freaking fandom is actually absurd and I'm just getting tired of the mindless shilling at this point. Either way, apparently we're all fragile men if we don't praise this show for everything that they're doing, no matter how lazy and cobbled together this thing is. But yeah, man, that is my thoughts on She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Episode 2. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, comment, share, and do all that good stuff. And I will see y'all in the next episode. Peace.